Well, hello again and happy Boxing Day. Uh, you join me now in the car. Uh, I'm about to set off to cover Leicester v Newcastle this afternoon and I'll, uh, I'll let you in on a little secret. I know my wife doesn't watch this, but uh, yeah, I wasn't originally meant to do this game today when the match list came out before Christmas. Uh, I had Boxing Day off. Now, I love my family. I'm, I'm, I'm really lucky, lovely family. I love them a bit, but you know, all day Christmas Eve with a wife and three kids, six and under, and extended family. All day Christmas, Christmas Day Eve with a wife and three kids, six and under, and extended family. You know, get me out of here. Uh, so before uh, before Christmas, I said to the guy who arranged the matches, you know, whatever wiggling around you need to do with that match list, please, you know, get me to the king power. So here I am. I'm on my way, and it's. Uh, it's a big game for Newcastle, big game for both sides really. You know, Leicester had picked up before the break uh, and you know, they, they were much improved, but Newcastle were, were absolutely flying, weren't they? And I think with Newcastle today, there's gonna be a, a certain level of apprehension and, and nerves even, because they've done so well with those five straight victories before the break. You know, are they, are they coming back and have they been able to bottle whatever magic that was? going into the World Cup, have they been able to, to store that? And will it be there when they when they kick off again uh, down, down at Leicester this afternoon? So I think it's a uh, I, I think it's a, a huge game in that regard and will be very informative as to as to where Newcastle United are going to go from, from the wonderful position in which they're in currently, which is, as we're sat here now is is third in the table. Uh, uh, sadly, what one negative, this journey does remind me of Steve Bruce because when I was banned uh, from St James's Park under the former manager, for some reason they sent me down to, to Leicester to cover uh, to cover yeah to cover them so uh yeah part of the journey probably will remind me of, of slightly uh, unhappier times but there you go prediction today uh i don't think newcastle will get beat i i, I just think where, where they are right now and i've said this before you know if you were going to be exposed to any manager during that six seven week break for the world cup you probably would want it to be eddie howe and i don't expect them to come back to, to the premier league in any way undercooked so yeah there you go my prediction newcastle won't lose i told you newcastle wouldn't get beat didn't i yeah i didn't go quite far enough for that and to be honest predicting newcastle won't lose is about as bold as saying night follows day at the moment isn't it so uh yeah a three nil win here at leicester as you'll notice i'm, uh, I'm outside the stadium uh, Leicester's security staff aren't quite as welcoming as their defence was today and uh, yeah I couldn't get back into the press box to, to record my video so I came outside which you know mixes up the venues and the locations doesn't it so here we are we'll just have a little wander uh, around outside the, uh, outside the King Power Stadium and uh, what a day it was for Newcastle I mean actually before we go any further just quickly I'm assuming that those of you watching on Prime the game has now finished and there's no spoilers here yeah, okay, yeah, we can go on. Uh, I, did, I did notice, and I do apologise during the game, you know, we're tweeting live updates, and for any of uh, any followers who have got those sort of, uh, those live notifications on the phone, uh, the new Newcastle what, 1 0 up, 2 0 up, you know, a minute, a good minute before it appeared on Prime. So I apologise for that, and duly, uh, duly uh, put a delay, uh, a delay on my tweets. So, but, you know. There was nothing delayed and nothing sluggish about the start Newcastle uh, have, have made here today on, on the return to Premier League football. You know, so much for rustiness. That was just absolute polished excellence. It really was. They were fantastic. And it says much that we've just spoken to Eddie Howe uh, just behind us there, the, the entrance to the press conference door. Uh, it says much that he was even prepared to commit to that, perhaps even being, you know, one of the best performances of the season. And teams were supposed to return, you know, Teams were supposed to return sluggish from this World Cup break and Newcastle came back and it wasn't as if they picked up where they left off. They looked better again and, you know, I, I touched on it in the video there this morning before I left, but if any team were going to improve for a six-week break, working with Eddie Howe as, he, as your coach, then it would be Newcastle. Jamie Carragher recently labelled Eddie the best coach in the country right now and you can't, you really can't disagree with that. They, uh, they were fantastic at the end. And as I say, easy 3-0 winners against the team Leicester, who, you know, who we've got to give a nod to them as well. They, they, they were awful, but they were made to look awful by Newcastle. Uh, the banner in which they told them apart inside the opening 32 minutes. Uh, you know, saying that, I thought Leicester really... I couldn't believe how badly they started Leicester, you know, with all the urgency of the sort of festive postal service. There was just nothing, no get up and go about them whatsoever. Cut contrast that to Newcastle and... You know, you, you come to do your you come to do your merit marks at the end there, and 
I know these often cause a fair degree of controversy, and for those of you out there, Bruno got an eight. Don't worry, no sixes or sevens this time. And eight's good, don't forget, eight is high. Uh, I just couldn't really pick a, a, a man of the match who I bumped up to sort of eight and a half. And in the end, I went for Miguel Almiron because uh, I just thought everything about his game. And he's a player who you look at and you think, well, you know, what he did before the World Cup OK was that a, was that a flash in the palm? Was that a, a, a moment in time when everything came good for him? been away for what, five or six weeks now and he come back to get it come back today and I use that phrase he looked better than he did before he went in and, and then to think he scored what was it seven and eight before the break to come back and look even sharper I thought his defensive work was t uh, tremendous there were one or two interceptions that were uh, you know that, that, that probably went unnoticed to a degree uh, he took his goal magnificently and he's starting to look now and I put this in my match report which will be linked to in the, the description below there are shades of uh, there are shades of more Salah about him. The way he is cutting in from the from the right wing on his left foot and just so regularly scores that that, that sort of same goal, same type of goal over and over, and he makes it look ever so easy. And when I say that, by the way, I mean the most Salah of two or three years ago. The most Salah of this season probably gets nowhere near Miguel Almiron on on current form. But when I talk about those merit marks and the the shortlist for man the match, you had Sven Botman up there and. I've just asked Brendan Rodgers in the press conference, you know, are Newcastle United title contenders? Brendan Rodgers waxed lyrical for a minute as to why they are in his initial response was, you know, absolutely. And the one player he picked out and spoke about more than any other was Sven Botman. He called him a proper player. He's big, he's aggressive, and he is a proper player. Wow. Again, today as well, you know, it probably goes a... Uh, not that it goes unnoticed, you know, I noticed the supporters are far from there singing about him uh, constantly, but you know, it's just the, the manner in which he goes about his business without any fuss is, is the point I'm making. There was one occasion when Patson Dacker looked as if he was uh, away for Leicester and what was a rare attack, and Botman just made three or four yards in a in just a, a matter of, you know, one and a half strides almost, and, and, and it took the ball off him. And again, he today was magnificent, and that quite incredible run of Sven Botman never starting on him. Never been part of a losing team with Newcastle uh, goes on, but you know up there in the conversation as well. You're you wrestling with these in your mind. Who do you give the star man to? You know, Botman, Bruno Gomares. I mean, Bruno Gomares, the Brazilian, morphed into Maradona with that that little pirouette which set Kieran Trippier and, and Almiron away for the for the second goal. Uh, and again, you know, you just see it. It's the little things with Bruno. The way he positions his ball to win free, positions his body to win free kicks. The the little touches to escape a man. And, play progressive passes around the corner he never takes an easy option the way there was one one offensive which ended in Chris Wood swiping over the ball but Miguel, uh, sorry uh, Bruno at the source of that was was fantastic and so positive and I use that word progressive as well and you know who else would you have up there Joe Linton on the left a, a brilliant headed goal uh, for the for the third wasn't it from Trippier's from Trippier's corner Trippier himself you know Trippier probably didn't have the World Cup he perhaps imagined in the end. You come back under Eddie Howe's care and all of a sudden you look like the player you were before the World Cup. I say that of all of them, you know. Uh, Bruno didn't have the World Cup he, he perhaps hoped for. Fabian Shaw got hooked at half-time in Switzerland's last game. They come back here, part of, of Newcastle under, under Eddie Howe's management and tutelage and all of a sudden they, they look like world beaters again and uh, all of the talk afterwards and we put this to Eddie as well you know the, the question a local reporter said this to me I was sat on the table with him at the end and he said uh, he said is that the first time that he's been asked about winning the league I said I said well yeah but this is a, an evolutionary process so it starts off with talk of top eight you know top eight isn't even you if you finish eighth it's you don't finish in the European places then if, if a couple of weeks on you start talking about you know European football then you start talking about Champions League football. The big debate before the international break was can Newcastle stay up there in the top four? Now we've come back and one game in and a, a demolition of Leicester. And the narrative is, is can Newcastle United actually win the league? And I'll probably go into this at more depth further, further down the line. You know, my own take is Leicester here, of course, magnificently in 2016 won the league. But they only needed 81 points to do it that year. I think you're going to need a hell of a lot more to do it with a team like Manchester City around and that for the time being might just be beyond Newcastle but playing the way they are and given they are one point in one place ahead of Man City as it stands and they've come back from the international break and they look as if they've improved rather than regressed or even stood still 
you know, why can't we at least have them part of the conversation? I think I'd go as far as to, to commit to that for now. So, yeah, another, uh, another quite brilliant win, quite brilliant performance. And uh, all credit to, to, to Eddie Howe. I've spoken about him so many times before. Just, just what I think of the job he's done. And it's not just the players who, you know, I've spoken there about who Joe Linton, uh, Almiron, two players who are already at the club, two players who 12 months ago were only being kept off the bottom of the table by goal difference. Yeah, you know, only Norwich City were below Newcastle 12 months ago. The improvement Eddie Howe has brought about in each of them, coupled with very smart recruitment and uh and all the rest of it is is so worthy of worthy of applause uh afterwards as well a couple of news yet mr clear up one first of all james madison now he was missing today for leicester with a knee injury that's perhaps connected to uh the problem which kept him out of the world cup and uh sorry he was at the world cup but didn't play of course uh he was sat in the stands looking looking rather grumpy and brendan rogers was asked afterwards about him uh with regards that interest of Newcastle and sort of played it straight as you would as you would imagine. Listen, my information on Madison is that because he's probably going to cost what would be a premium in January, that's just not the market Newcastle are in. You know, I've said this before, I've they there about identifying players for, for half of the sort of 60, 70, 80 million pound it would probably cost to to buy Madison in January. So I don't expect movement on on, on that one. Uh, I'm spinning around, yes, it's getting a bit dark and I'm being told, you know, these videos are all about lightning and then, uh, you know, as well as the content, it's, it's about what the viewer can see. So I'll wander back up there. The Christmas tree was quite nice. We'll maybe make it back there again. So, uh, yeah, other news items. These were two before the game. Now, John Joe Shelby is going to be missing for the next six to eight weeks with a, a calf injury. And now we thought that John Joe Shelby only had to play three more games to activate a one year contract extension. Now, I'm led to believe that's not the case yet, so, so there's a little bit of doubt as to whether that was three starts or that there were different sort of conditions attached to that. So, so as it stands, you're looking at John Joe Shelby being out for another couple of months and that one-year contract extension, his deal expires at the end of this year, not having yet kicked in. So that's an interesting one to watch. Callum Wilson missed today's game because of uh, illness. Earlier in the week, uh, Eddie Howe had expected him to play. Chris Wood came in. Uh, of course, Callum only declared himself unavailable at the last minute. Uh, and Chris Wood came in and took his penalty well and played well as well. I thought that was Chris Wood's best overall game for a, for, for a long time with Newcastle in terms of how he, how he held it up and brought others in. Uh, I, thought he was, uh, I thought he was very good. Uh, yeah, so, so Wilson should be back for Leeds on Saturday, the John Joe Shelby News and, and James Madison. So yeah, that's just, uh, that's just about that for now. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this match day vlog. Uh, I'm off now to uh, back to the car and try and make it back to back to Tyneside for last order. So yeah, foot to the floor, uh, 70 miles an hour, but no more. Uh, yeah, I hope you've had a, a happy Christmas, guys. Thanks again for watching. In the description below, I'll link you to my match report. And I'm also going to put in there as well a link to uh, the interview I had with Eddie Howe in Christmas Eve's Daily Mail, where Eddie goes off topic away from talk of football, speaks about his family, speaks about moving into Alan Shearer's house and it was a, a really nice piece which we did when we were out in Saudi and Eddie, Eddie really opened up and I think it's a, it's a fascinating, charming insight into the, the man behind the manager and what a, man, what a manager he is, he's proven to be for Newcastle. Okay, take care guys, thank you again for watching, hit subscribe, all the rest of it, you know the drill by now. Bye bye.